I'm the only I'm the only in European Parliament for the moment. Right, right, right. <laughs> you Together can, with the security you can, guards, huh? <laughs> you can run naked in the corridors. Nobody will see you. <laughs> yeah. So well, thank you for for that will certainly clear for parliament. being with us. <laughs> yes, uh, had to, happy to welcome uh, you as a guest speaker today, uh, Guy. Uh, I know that uh, we're going to discuss this for a long time uh, in the group. Uh, we have a special caucus where all the party will, will will play an important role in consulting the process, in in, in some cases guiding the process. Uh, we had an event with with Wymac and, and, and young people, uh, young liberals uh, across Europe. Uh, this is going to be a big exercise because it's backed by the three institutions. And uh, I'm sure that the delegates uh, will have a lot of questions uh, regarding the substance, but also there are a lot of technicalities uh, when it comes to the, to the conference. It was a challenging exercise. I, I know that from, from my already seven uh, years experience in European Parliament. But it's not my show. Huh? Uh, it's your time. So uh, I would like to give you directly the floor. Uh, and please uh, address the, the, the audience. Uh, what, is, what is at stake? What is status quo? Uh, what are the next steps? Uh, and probably the, the, the most important question uh, will, will come uh, some, sometime. Uh, are we going to change the treaties? Are we going to stay with, with the same treaties? Uh, because you always said that uh, this Europe is for, uh, for, for 20th century, not for 21st century. Uh, how are we going to make this Europe more efficient if you want to shape the, the tendencies in the 21st century? Please, Guy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ilian. Uh, so uh, maybe the best what I can do is, uh, before going to uh, more uh, technicalities, uh, first of all, to explain uh, uh, yeah, why uh, this uh, conference uh, uh, of, of the future of Europe is absolutely necessary and, and, and why our political family uh, has uh, requested it for, uh, for, for years now, and we are very pleased that finally uh, the, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it will happen. We think that the conference uh, on the future of, uh, of Europe is absolutely uh, necessary because every time when there is a crisis, uh, you see that um, there is action by Europe, but that we are in many cases far too weak, too late, uh, in our uh, in our reaction, that was the case, for example, after the financial crisis, uh, when it has taken years and years and years to uh, uh, e emerge from that crisis, uh, while uh, the Americans were capable uh, to react immediately, um, cleaning up the banks, uh, uh, investing in their uh, e economy, uh, quantitative easing. There was a, a massive reaction uh, by the. Uh, uh, Americans after the financial crisis, and uh, in, in Europe we we, we saw uh, uh, the opposite. It, it it took years, years, years before uh, we could uh, uh, have a, yeah a small investment program, the so-called Juncker plan. Uh, you, we see that also with uh, uh, with the migration crisis. Migration crisis is an ongoing crisis where where Europe is not capable to um, uh, to, uh, to to find the way out to to manage it. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, it, it's, it's already uh, since 1900, uh, uh, yeah, 1999 that uh, uh, ma migration uh, became uh, uh, a so-called European uh, policy, but we were never uh, really capable, uh, neither today, uh, to, uh, to have an agreement and, and to find uh, a common way to manage uh, uh, migration in, uh, uh, in, in Europe. The, the same is happening uh, with, uh, with Brexit when a big member state like the UK is leaving uh, the European Union. It's difficult to say that everything goes well uh, in, the, uh, in the Union. Uh, on, on, on the contrary, it's a sign that things are not going well. Uh, and then uh, we have the ongoing uh, COVID, uh, COVID crisis, uh, where we have seen certainly in the beginning that um, yeah there was a, a lack of uh, uh, European actions simply because health is not uh, a, a competence of the uh, uh, of the European Union and and, and finally uh, our, our our problems in our in our neighbourhood in, in in our foreign policy when we want to react to uh, what is happening to Navalny when we want to react to uh, Lukashenko when we want to react to 
um, the limitation of the democracy, the end of democracy in Hong Kong. Uh, when we want to react even uh, uh, more generally uh, to the uh, to international conflicts like the conflict between Palestinians and, 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 and Israel, we are not capable to do that uh, uh, most of the time uh, because there is no agreement, no unanimity uh, between uh, the 27 uh, member states and, and, and ministers of foreign affairs uh, to do something. So um, the conclusion of all this is that uh, uh, the, we, we, the European Union uh, is, is, is not fit for uh, the 21st century, uh, that we need to uh, make a number of uh, uh, reforms, und undertake a number of uh, reforms. Uh, and, and that's the reason uh, why uh, this uh, Conference on the Future of Europe is organized. Also, because we think uh, that uh, in, in, instead of making it uh, uh, an exercise uh, top to the bottom, we, we need the opposite. We need uh, uh, an exercise where, first of all, uh, European citizens have the possibility to give their recommendations, their wishes, their opinions uh, on the future of, the, uh, of Europe. And, 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 and we, uh, as uh, representatives of uh, uh, European democracy uh, in national parliaments, in the European Parliament, uh, in the Commission, in the Council, have to react to that, have to respond to that uh, with vision, uh, with proposals. Uh, with uh, uh, ideas uh, for uh, reforms. So it, it will uh, be a, a unique uh, process because for the first time, as you indicated, Tiliad, it will be uh, uh, an exercise undertaken by the three institutions, um, Council, Commission, Parliament. That was never the case. Take, for example, the Convention a, a few, uh, 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 yeah, now uh, more or less uh, two, uh, two decades ago when we started it. Uh, was uh, a purely uh, uh, a pure initiative of of of, of the European Council uh, and, and 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 not of the three institutions. This time, it are the three institutions who are doing it, and uh, the second novelty naturally is the involvement of citizens. Uh, that will happen in in two different ways. The first is. Uh, uh, the possibility of every individual citizens, uh, individual citizens to participate to the so-called interconnective multilingual digital platform. Uh, so every citizen can open an account on that platform and uh, inform him, himself about uh, uh, the uh, the conference, uh, participate to the debates that are running on uh, the platform, and even organize activities. Uh, that are uh, put uh, on uh, on the platform. So in total now there are nearly thousand uh, events and activities scheduled uh, on that platform uh, that are held in the four corners of uh, uh, of, uh, of of Europe. That's 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 one way. So the individual citizen can participate uh, in debates, in activities, organize activities on that uh, platform, and the outcome of that platform will be. Uh, the basis for uh, uh, another important involvement of the citizens that are the organization of four big um, citizens panels. Uh, we uh, will organize uh, after the summer break and in the beginning of next year. Uh, and uh, every citizens panel will uh, be constituted of uh, 200 randomly chosen citizens. Uh, so in total, 800. Uh, with an overrepresentation of young people between 16 and 25, uh, they will represent one third of these citizens, and, and they will discuss the outcome of the platform, uh, the con uh, what what has been discussed on the platform, uh, to formulate uh, recommendations, proposals, uh, uh, suggestions to uh, the uh, conference, uh, the plenary of the conference. Uh, that uh, will hold his first uh, meeting um, um, uh, uh, in, in, on the 19th of June in Strasbourg. Uh, and, and this plenary uh, is a plenary that uh, will be constituted of uh, more or less 450 people uh, with uh, representatives of national parliaments, four for every uh, par uh, country, uh, uh, also representatives of the European Parliament, representatives of the Commission, the representatives of the Member States, of the, of the Council, uh, two for every Member State, and uh, to which will be invited also the uh, representatives of the uh, Citizens Panel. 
And the purpose is that uh, the goal is that that plenary, uh, in, uh, with the attendance of the representatives of the citizens, will formulate uh, a list uh, of uh, ideas, proposals, uh, on the future development of the European Union that will respond directly uh, to the wishes and recommendations of the of, of, of the citizens so it's a, the, the conference is not uh, a, a listening exercise huh? uh, simply uh, we listening to the citizens to to hear what they want uh, in fact we have that already we we have the eurobarometer so in the eurobarometer we know exactly what uh, uh, citizens uh, want and, and and don't want but, no the conference is different the conference wants to hear first of all from the citizens uh, what they want, but we want to formulate uh, pol policy proposals, institutional changes uh, to make these proposals uh, possibly happening. Uh, and, and, and this is, it will be a, a sort of a two-way uh, participation, dialogue uh, uh, and conclusions that we hope to reach uh, uh, in uh, by the end uh, of uh, of uh, uh, this conference, and uh, our our hope is that we can formulate this uh, package of proposals that will uh, yeah deliver this uh, future vision of uh, of Europe uh, by the uh, by the month of March already uh, next year. So that uh, the, the French presidency, under the leadership of Emmanuel Macron, uh, can use that as a basis for. Uh, a number of uh, reforms uh, uh, that will be launched and will be proposed uh, in uh, in uh, uh, in the European uh, Union. So that's uh, mainly uh, what we uh, uh, what will be the the, the procedure. Uh, I, it's ab absolutely key for for our movement and and for our party that we use the platform. We have to try to own the platform. Uh, we need to organize all uh, ideas uh, on that platform. Why? Uh, because uh, it's absolutely uh, it's absolutely key that uh, our liberal and democratic ideas are are running on the platform. Uh, like I said, the the work in the conference and the work in the citizens panels we organize will be based uh, on what is happening on the platform. So if the liberal and democratic ideas are not uh, present, uh, not taken uh, to the platform, yeah, uh, our, our ideas will, will, will not uh, be spread in uh, the conference. So my... Uh, um, my, my plea to everybody who is uh, following is listening this is to uh, for uh, to use the platform for organizing activities for participating in, in debates and uh, what the ideal situation would be that is that every local section of every of our political uh, parties in all day uh, would open an account a page an activity a debate uh, uh, on, 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 on on that platform as a, as a as a as a as a way to spread uh, uh, liberal and democratic uh, ideas in, in into that uh, uh, into that tool and, and like i said it's very in in uh, 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 very easy uh, to do so you open an account you subscribe the charter uh, and, and and you can uh, participate uh, to to the activities the debates that are running uh, on that uh, platform uh, and the second uh, what we try to do is to uh, push uh, and to organize our uh, uh, liberal democratic family on the european level uh, in the conference we will hold uh, a caucus on the 18th of june in strasbourg that it's the day before the first plenary of uh, the conference where we have invited all uh, uh, meps who are in the conference so european parliamentarians who are in the conference uh, I think uh, your, yourself, uh, Ilian, are, uh, 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 will be there. Uh, all the MPs, uh, uh, in, in total, a little bit less than 20 MPs uh, have been uh, appointed that belong uh, to the Renew and uh, to the uh, Alde family, uh, or commissioners, uh, or ministers in different uh, countries, uh, mostly uh, ministers and, and, and secretary of state for foreign affairs. Uh, will be uh, invited, and actually also the party. Uh, I think that uh, Mr. Dooley is uh, 
uh, is, is invited to that uh, uh, caucus. So that uh, uh, all uh, those who will play a crucial role uh, in uh, the conference uh, will meet uh, already on uh, the 18th uh, in Strasbourg uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in preparation, I should say, of this uh, uh, of, of the launch of the conference uh, in, in the plenary uh, a day uh, later. So uh, to, uh, to, to finalize and to, uh, to, to, to conclude my intervention, uh, Ian, uh, what, 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 what we think is that by organizing a conference where there is such an, a unique involvement of the citizens directly uh, and through citizens panels, uh, we hope to uh, find an agreement uh, on uh, reforms that will uh, be the basis for uh, the uh, for 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 the future for the next decades in the European uh, Union, and, and and we think that it will be very difficult uh, for whatever uh, institution in the Union uh, or whatever leadership in the Union to uh, to ignore uh, the uh, the results of the conference because the conference is organized by the three institutions with the involvement of the national parliaments based on the ideas of the citizens. So it will be impossible for whoever uh, to uh, deny these conclusions. Thank you. Thank you so much and thank you for making yourself available for, for a couple of, uh, of, uh, of questions uh, after the introductory uh, remarks by, by Antoinette. But I completely agree. This will uh, be a strong engagement by the citizens, but we have to promote this huh? uh, through different channels. I see that uh, the, the officials are trying to do it in a usual, classical way, uh, on, on newsletters, uh, on, on newspapers, but that is not enough. We have to engage social media more. People are everywhere. They're on TikTok, on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook. And that is the job. Thank you for having the, vo the voice of uh, the youth represents all the discussion. And to Mr. Verhofstadt's efforts to have the young people not just part, but uh, as he already said, overrepresented segment at the plenary stage of the Conference for the Future of Europe. After the announcement of the conference during the past year, the European Liberal Youth Organization guided an online platform for discussion between our youth organizations across Europe. And we recently adopted and already tabled our proposals on the official digital platform. The, our proposals came as a result of a true exercise in listening to each other and understanding that if we can't bridge our ideas, we can't expect the same by the actual decision makers. So our proposals are solely what we could all agree to. Of course, we have tabled a set of topical priorities on international trade, migration, uh, climate change, dig digitalization, empowering young people um, and promoting our European values. But the focal point of our proposals are not topical. They touch on the core of the union infrastructure. Because look, while the discussion on our climate tar targets or whether the ETS should be extended to all carbon emitting sectors are important, they wouldn't truly change how we do things. And they fall short to admitting that there are problems which sooner or later we will have to face. Just yesterday, Politico published an article stating that um, the confidence in the EU has dropped amid the pandemic. It quotes a report according to which the majority of the um, respondents said their confidence had deteriorated following the past year, with majorities in a number of countries saying that they viewed the European project as broken. And yet, despite of that, the bigger portion still stated that the COVID pandemic uh, demonstrates the need for more European cooperation. This brings me to the question of what do young people want? Um, we've had the chance to discuss this among our membership, but also with uh, youth organization leaders across the political spe spectrum. And I have the opportunity to address our liberal family at the ALDE Council with many of you here being respected decision makers. So I will allow myself to be bluntly honest. I'm very happy that Mr. Verhofstadt said um, the Conference for the Future of Europe won't be a listening exercise only because what we want is ambition. We want change. In the beginning of the early 2000s, the European Union was 
contemplating a common um, European asylum system at the wake of the post Yugoslav wars. Um, there was a discussion on climate change, uh, which was vivid, uh, with Al Gore sounding the alarm. The idea of transnationalists was roaming the European Parliament, and the Convention on the Future of the European Union was just started. Um, it almost sounds like a deja vu. We wish to see that this time, this conference will be an honest conversation on what isn't working, why isn't it working, and how we can fix it, so that we don't go around in circles another 20 years on. We wish to see um, Iceland, Norway, Switzerland, the UK, and definitely the Western Balkans take part of this conversation because they have more than just a passing interest in Europe's future. So again, change is what we wish for. We wish to see a union that is ready to act and act quickly. As Mr. Verhofstadt said, we, we, we missed so many opportunities to, to show a quick action. We wish to have uh, abolished the unanimity voting and the blocking minority votings of council. It makes Europe too slow. It makes it too timid. We wish for more transparency um, at the deliberations of the council. If some of the national leaders are going to blame Europe for all their misfortunes, we want to know what their position in Europe was. Also, the liberalism of two uh, countries cannot hold 27 back, so we need a change there. It needs to be fixed. We wish to see an election of the European Commission president that keeps Europeans awake at night, just as many Europeans were calculating which state will bring how many electoral points for the US elections. The current Spitzenkandidaten system cannot do that. It needs to be fixed. We wish to see a single seat of the European Parliament. The European Court of Auditors already estimated that not moving will generate savings of uh, 114 million euro per year, let alone the, the print, the carbon print uh, of the move. While advocating climate action, only this pompous symbolism isn't enough to justify that anymore. It needs to be fixed. So to sum it up, the EU institutions indeed have not been going through serious reforms for a decade uh, now, which often requires seeking ad hoc, hoc solutions to fill in the gaps and adapt to the current realities, which is what both of you already said. Europe is fit for the 20th rather than the 21st century. And we want to see that changed. Um, at LIMEC, we don't care if this is gonna be called a treaty change, European constitution, intergovernmental uh, agreement, or a fairy wish list. Insofar, it brings solutions to fix what citizens see as broken. There is a growing unrest in people, and especially young people across Europe, wanting to see solutions to their problems with the economic impact of, of COVID uh, just yet to unveil itself. Youth unemployment is 38% in Spain and around 30 in Greece, Italy, and Sweden. With all the expectation for the Conference with Future of Europe as a liberal flagship, that was being building uh, over the past year, we hope it doesn't end up to be too timid, too literal, or, or just a PR stunt. Because Europe, as Mr. Verhofstadt said, already disregarded a few wake-up calls, uh, with Brexit uh, in particular, and seems to continue to sleepwalk while history teaches us that empires have disappeared because they refuse to keep up with pace with the, change, with the changing times and the changing realities. And if Europe, doesn't do something brave to answer to young people's concerns, it will inevitably lose on their hearts and minds. The answer of the EPP to all of this will be probably traditional values of the s and social affairs. Um, no industry probably will say the Greens. The liberal answer must be progressive, radical, brave, and ambitious change. And before you say all of this is way too far-fetching, let me just uh, finish by this. Um, 170 years ago, at the Paris Peace Con Congress, uh, Victor Hugo said, a day will come when war will seem as absurd between Paris and London, between Vienna and Turin, as it is today between Rouen and Amiens. That might have sounded like a chimera then, but we have achieved this dream and we can be proud of it. However, let's not wait for another century to make a leap forward, because taking a new step Shaping a new world is scary and uncomfortable, but what is scarier than change is regretting that we missed an opportunity. The youth counts on all of you to join us, to support our proposals tabled at the digital platform, so we do not let that happen. 
let's not waste time and act with determination and ambition. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you so much. We do count on WIMEC as well, Antoinette. And uh, as, as you said, liberals are always uh, um, uh, ambition, ambitious. Uh, we have our, our plan as well uh, for the conference. Uh, in the wider of the conference, we are going to organize uh, several of, uh, of activities, meetings, in the name of Hans van Balen. We call them Hans van Balen uh, town hall meetings uh, in cooperation with member parties. All the party will host uh, series of, uh, of, of events uh, and the time is the estimated time is of course uh, mid-September uh, to mid-December but uh, with that uh, I would like to conclude the, 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 the intervention part and open the floor uh, for our council delegates so Dietrich back to you do we have uh, any questions or comments no, no? not yet not yet but I'm sure uh, many will arrive we were so clear. Yeah. That's also true. As That's always. also true. Roman Jakic. Yes. Calling Ljubljana. The chairman of Lipsin. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I would uh, like to thank both uh, uh, both speakers uh, for the words they uh, they 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 uh, introduced us. Uh, what will uh, be uh, let's say the rule of liberals in in this process what i uh, guy reminded me on the conference on the future of europe 20 years ago when i participated and probably you will uh, you will remember that in that time the president of the european parliament pat cox opened the door for all of us not in that time not being uh, the member of uh, european union yet to participate in not just in the discussion but also in the work of the institutions in that time that why i would like to remind the liberals who are always the front run runners concerning the let's say concerning to see the situation broader than just the european union but um, to to invite and to let's say to include also especially young people from the southeast uh, europe to the process of discussion of the future of Europe. I just wanted to say this uh, because I have the feeling that we are all the time talking about just uh, the citizens of the European Union and not the citizens of Europe, because we know that Europe is broader than just the European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roman. I'm sure Guy can answer this question, but yeah. as I'm aware, there's yeah. no job blocking huh, for Western Balkans, yeah, for yeah, Southern yes. and well, yeah, it's a neighborhood. Two things. Please. Yeah, two things very short. So on the platform, there is no geo-blocking. Huh? So every European can uh, can enter the, 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 the and, and, and take an account on the platform and participate in the uh, in, in the discussion. And secondly, um, for uh, we have decided that from uh, uh, October on, uh, we will also invite representatives of the uh, of the Western Balkans uh to the conference and and that uh not only for representatives of uh, the government but also of the parliaments so that means that citizens can participate on the platform and at the same time uh we will have representatives of the western balkans because uh, our our opinion is that uh, the, the the western balkans uh, yeah is part of of europe yeah, and that is success for, for all the party for Renew and for Lipsen because we were pushing for, for so long uh, to include Western Balkans in the, in the whole process, in the whole mechanism of, of uh, consulting and, and decision-taking uh, uh, process. Uh, Dietrich? Okay, well, if everything is so clear, and uh, uh, we have no, no further questions. Uh, uh, I would like to thank you uh, once again, uh, Guy and Antoinette, for, for your, your strong commitment. Uh, we'll, we'll surely knock on, knock on your doors uh, to, to push for, for, for liberal ideas. And uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to come and, and, and talk to us uh, as well. And I'm sure that uh, the member parties will do the, will do the same.
Uh, thank you uh, so much. And uh, I think that concludes our agenda uh, for today, today's council meeting. And uh, I uh, would like to thank you uh, for your strong participation and commitment, but also uh, to tell you that we're going to continue, Jakob, in... On 1 o'clock with the bureau candidates. Uh, at 1 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. We're going to have a debate with the bureau candidates. Thank you so much. Thank you.